we'll start with a quick review for this book, Twitter and Tear Gas. Overall, it was interesting. Some interesting ideas there, and it was interesting to hear as I was listening to it. Some things about movements, protests, etc. However, I felt it was too long and a lot of details that were not related or interested or interesting to me. So I think it was way too long and I felt like it was a kind of a memoir more than an actual dive or actual dive deep dive into protests. I thought I will get more information about how protests work and the inside and outside. There is some some of it, obviously, but I felt there was not enough of it. Therefore, I'm the, I'll do three. I'll give this book three out of five. Let's see some of the notes. Online movements have a hard time organizing and demanding a coherent change. So it's more of a problem of online movements that they are dispersed and they have a harder time organizing and finding a coherent change. Movements have a hard time maintaining structure between leaders on the ground and leaders on the internet. So there is two leaders, one of them will be on the ground, one of them will be online, and there is a problem of coordinating and making sure every, everyone are the same page. Movements often suffer from a lack of organization and leadership, even uh, which eventually tends to cause their breakdown. Since there is no leadership, in organization. It's a lot of people together, but there is lack of leadership, lack of organization. Eventually they break down because there is no coherent change and all that things. And it's hard to keep everyone together. Hashtags allow people to meet same minded people online, which is the easiest way is through hashtags because you have hashtag Black Lives Matter and hashtag all kinds of other protests and therefore people can find same-minded people there. Social media allowed mass sharing as it takes only a few people to widely share something. It used to take much longer and much more effort and resources to share information. Over these days, it's much quicker and thanks to social media. Side note, the introduction and the background information is too long. It's like I think like about an hour worth of listening at least, if not more, just of background. In general, there is too much in the book. There is too much background information that it's widely known. And if someone doesn't know, just Google it. Uh, you don't have to go through explaining every term you have in the book and explain that widely or comprehensively. Uh, most people know what those things are and whoever doesn't can pause and stop reading and we have Google so it was kind of useless I think and that's why it should be shorter too the book is on the longer side and should definitely or could be shorter quick times are people we know but don't have strong connection with but are within our social reach so those are what called weak ties, people we know, but we have a reach, but we're not going to be, or we're not in contact with. Protests require logistics planning and mostly done in a non-hierarchical way. There's a lot of logistics going back, which was interesting to read about what's going behind. So food and organization and sometimes medicine. And the way it's done is non-hierarchical way. There is no organizer that's just done by some people doing this some people doing this it's kind of a group or population help or whatever you call this protest is a symbol of rebellion that's why protest is often a symbol of rebellion that's why many young people 
are drawn to this in the first place. Free riders are not as common because people like to feel and belong. That's why I had also the sign there, the number sign, because and I like this part, I like this idea. Because it should be more free riders, which means people who benefit from the protest, but who are not participating in the protest. The question is that posed why there is no more of them. One of the ideas were that free riders are not as common because people want to feel belong. So no, obviously there is always free riders, but most people would like to feel belong and would like to feel a part of it or to be a part of it. Due to the lack of official leadership, aggressive people tend to take leadership roles because there is no leadership. There is no one who is the leader in the first place. Whoever tends to be in the local leader, at least, is more aggressive people because they will rise to the top. So more alphas find himself on the top for good and bad. Protests often satisfy the need for community. That's another reason why there is so many people, more and more people out there. Protesting is big because people need the feeling of community and protests definitely satisfy that need. Side note, the author goes out of topic quite often. So there's quite a few places the author goes out of topic, which sometimes is like, what? How is that related? to the topic so that's the first part let's see the notes from the second part network effect means the bigger the platform the more people want to be on it that has it how it works with networks and social media the more people will be there the more people will be on it that's why it's really hard for new social media or new networks to be successful. The Ferguson story was not promoted by Facebook's algorithms because people didn't want to like or comment on it. So they have that Ferguson, I think a black person died by police or something, if I remember right. What, what happened is that, and there was huge protest, the problem is that Facebook did not promote it. And after investigation, they found out that People didn't like or comment on it, so the Facebook algorithms could not pick it up as a important story. Not every big it's supposed to be protest, and not every big protest is influential. Even though sometimes they could be very big, they're not influential. Destructive capacity is the destructive co the destruction caused by a protest, which tend to influence people in power. The question is how much destructive capacity a protest have. The destruction is how much destruction, basically, that movement can cause, because that's what usually move people, or people in power, polit politicians. Side note, the book feels a bit disorganized and some parts have no clear points. The organization of the book is kind of like a little loose, I felt, and some of the points not only are not directly related to the topic, they also don't have a clear point. It's like, what's the point of this story or this idea? Many times ignoring the protest is the best solution even for authoritarian countries. Censorship often doesn't work in the age of the internet. So that's why most governments find out that ignoring the protest is actually the best strategy. And censorship, making a taking the videos out or doing all kinds of other censorship things is not the best solution because usually there is always, especially in the end of the internet, there is something always come out. China's censorship led some criticism to stay online but takes down posts that seem to be in the same location, probably done to prevent protests. So China has a very tough censorship system but they do let some criticism go through because for whatever reason they do that however what they find out that when they really take things down is when there is a few posts in the same place then that's when the censorship works more 
or well, and the theory is that they want to prevent protest from forming. Making information seem to be fake or uncredible is one of the ways governments try to control the narrative. They make it hard to understand what what's true and what's not. That's why governments, especially in China, Russia, Turkey, I think they did the same thing. They make it harder to understand what's the truth and what's credible, what's not credible. And that's where they can also promote their own narrative and people often believe that. I note some of the book feels like a memoir, so that's what I spoke in the review part. There's a lot of stories about her own life, which again, does not directly relate to the book. It's a memoir, it's, it's fine to talk about herself, but it's not directly related to the topic again. So again, that's it for the notes. And as I said, there is some interesting parts. I definitely learned some things about protest, but I wish there was more, it would be a little more focused on the actual DNA, I would, if, if you may, of the protest, a little more how it works. That's what I hoped to get out of it, but it was more of some stories and she definitely cherish protests and she liked them. And that's definitely what you get out of the book. That could be good. That's that's her view on the matter. But not enough actual data on protest. I wish it was more of that. Thank you.